What's up everybody, JJ Shankles here. Today we're going back in time with another retro camera review. Let's go back to the camera wall. This is the one we want. And this is the Nikon D2X, originally released in 2005 by Nikon as a professional camera body. Look how big this is. This is for professionals. This isn't for your amateur travel photos. You wouldn't just throw this in a bag. This is a large, hefty camera. This will put you over the baggage weight limit when you're traveling. I'll put what exactly the weight is. I'll have to look it up. I'm not sure exactly off the top of my head. Very heavy. There's a couple reasons why I have this camera and why I enjoy it. And today I want to step you through it and show you how fun it is to work with retro cameras. First off, this camera is a huge step up from the Nikon D1 series. The D1 series used a different battery system. It's a nickel acid battery, I think. Basically, they don't hold a charge very well. Even original batteries, I've read reviews that when the camera came out, it still didn't last near as long. But this camera system here upgraded to a lithium battery, so you can buy brand new batteries. They're still making batteries that fit this system because it was the same battery that carried forward into the D3. So that alone is a great reason to buy this one over the old one. If you actually want to use the camera, the D2 will be a better purchase than a D1. D1s are hard to use because of the battery issue. But another reason why I have this camera is the price. Originally in 2005, this was released for $5,000, but off eBay, I paid only $200 to get a really good copy. A more rough, well-used body would go for only about $100 somewhere in that range, 100 to 200, for a high quality camera. This camera had a bunch of the upgrades that stuck with cameras to nowadays. The sensor is a CMOS 12 megapixel sensor. Even my phone still only uses 12 megapixels. This is the Pixel 4 XL. Main camera in here is only 12 megapixels. This one, it is a cropped sensor in there, so you're not getting a full frame sensor yet. The D3 was the first professional camera by Nikon to use a full frame aspect ratio, but that means the D3 is a bit more expensive. It's hard to find a good quality D3 on eBay for under $500, whereas this one easily under $200. But just because it's a crop sensor doesn't mean it's bad. It's only a 1.5 times crop, super 35 millimeter size. This one had higher resolution, lower frame rates. But with this one, you did get the benefit of being able to crop in. You can crop in even more and get up to, I think, 11 or 12 frames per second. And that sounds like this. And that's from 2005. The whole mirror shutter system in there is moving around very quickly. And so you can use this either as, either as a high megapixel camera at 12 megapixels, or you can use it as a lower resolution, higher frame rates camera. So it really was a camera that did it all. The third reason I have this camera, well, Okay, so first reason was usability. Second reason was price. The third one is a big one. It's compatibility of lenses. It still uses F-mount lenses and uses the same autofocusing system as a bunch of modern cameras. So I can use any lens that I can use on my other one. Any lens I can use on the D850, I can use on the D2X, which is really impressive that I don't have to have a bunch of old lenses to use on these old retro bodies because that'd be just a huge hassle. I'd probably buy one cheap prime to keep on here, but this I can use the same lenses I use on any of my other cameras on here. You can't use Z mount lenses. They're mirrorless Z mount lenses don't work on here, but these lenses I can use with the FTZ as adapter on the mirrorless camera. So I can just take a picture. This isn't a very fast lens. Let me put a prime on here. The native ISO is only going to be between 100 and 800, so it's not a great low light camera. So now I want to take it over here and show you guys some test shots of it. I did want to mention I'm not the world's best photographer. That's why I'm using the D2X and not a modern D5 or D6. But this is a review of the D2X to show you how much fun it can be for anyone to use, even for non-photographers. One thing to note about this camera, the back screen here is a huge downside to it. It's only a 2.2 inch screen, really low resolution. It looks like a very old system you're working with here. There really aren't that many menu items in the menu. It's great that most of the controls are physical dials or buttons situated around the camera. It's a great camera to learn on because everything you do is a physical action to change. The one downside, the screen on the back really isn't that good for checking your pictures. It's good for checking composition, but the colors aren't great on there, and it's so small, it's kind of difficult to check focus even. You can zoom into the picture to check focus, but it's gonna be so much better when you take the pictures and put them on a real computer monitor 
blow them up nice and large. Also, this back screen has a color shift. It's one it's documented online from a bunch of other reviewers that there's a bit of a green shift in there. So the white balance of the back screen isn't great. So it's not going to be the best way to judge how your photos are looking until you take them to the real computer. Another huge perk of this camera is the ergonomics. Having these professional bodies being almost a perfect square, you get a great horizontal grip and vertical grip. Both of them work great. You get your own dedicated di dials and shutter buttons while holding it vertically or horizontally. So if you're shooting ver a bunch of vertical pictures, you could hold it like this all day. It's only slightly less comfortable than vertical. Both feel great. It's such a large, hefty body. You get a great feel in your hand. Another great feature you get only on professional bodies is that there's two LCD screens. So up top you have a screen, your shutter speed, your aperture, how many shots left, your battery card, sort of options like that. Then down here on the bottom below your regular screen, you've got another LCD. This one shows you your ISO, your quality, and your white balance. And any of them can be changed directly with a button. It's super easy to change very quickly with a dedicated button that's right down here. It's a really fun way to open the memory card slot. So this switch here, you pull back that flap and inside there's a button you press. Up here you press this gray button and that slides out your memory card enough that you can pull it out. So it only uses these old compact flash cards. These are no longer used by modern cameras, but luckily it does work with this. This is a 16 gigabyte compact flash card and it does work with this one. This camera works a lot better with more modern compact flash cards. That's another improvement of the D2X over the previous D1 and D1X. The D1 series has issues with larger memory cards. I think the D1 has a limit of only working with up to one gigabyte memory cards, so you have to use really small compact flash cards, which are really hard to find nowadays. But this one I do know works with this 16 gigabyte card. I'm not sure the upper limits, but I know it works with this one. But that about wraps up our review of the D2X in 2020. Retro camera, 15 years old. Overall, I think this is an amazing learning tool and at a really great price. I know I've found I've learned a lot through this camera. But anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this review. Let me know in the comments down below if you guys have used retro cameras and how much you enjoy them. And while you're down there, if you would hit that like and subscribe button if you enjoyed this video. And if you didn't, hit that thumbs down and let me know in the comments what you think about it. But anyway, I hope you guys have an amazing day out there and I'll see you in the next video. Go Toaster out.